Hey, my name is Chad Harrington with Him Publications, and I am reviewing the book Spiritual Warfare by Carl Payne. So I've read Neil Anderson and other writers like Neil. Um, he's probably the most well-known sort of spiritual warfare, you could call him demon guy, uh, people who are engaged in kind of the, the nitty-gritty of spiritual warfare. Uh, I've led Steps to Freedom. I've even met Neil Anderson, and he's personally counseled me. So spiritual warfare is not um, a new topic of my reading. And we've published Jennifer Barnett's book, First Freedoms, which talks about inner healing and what God can do at a deep level um, through, through creative means of prayer. But let me tell you that Carl Payne's book, Spiritual Warfare, I think is a paradigm-shifting book. I know it is for me, frankly, um, at our church here in Franklin, Tennessee. Um, we're just having conversations about some deeper spiritual warfare things and um, topics. And uh, a friend recommended I read this book. And so I'm, I read it and I'm telling you, okay, so this is the main takeaway from Spiritual Warfare by Carl Payne. He says that basically there's two a, you know, kind of two options that Christians usually have as they think about what demons can do in someone's life, either oppression or possession. So non-Christians can be possessed by demons. Christians cannot be possessed, but they can be oppressed. Typically, it's one or the other. But what Payne argues, along with he lists a handful of others, he argues that there's a third category, which is demonization, which isn't possession or oppression. It's in the middle for Christians who are experiencing daily what he calls torment. And he says that this is called demonization. The analogy that he uses that's probably the easiest way to communicate this. Actually, he uses several that are helpful. But the analogy that I found really helpful is that of a leech. So if you, he says if you basically swim in the water long enough, the waters of sin, metaphorically, leeches are going to get on you if you're swimming in the waters where leeches are. And they're going to be on you. They don't dwell, they don't like inhabit you, but they're on you and they kind of seek their teeth into you or whatever leeches out. I don't know, <laughs> but they're going to suck the life out of you. They're going to tempt, try and destroy you. He says that's what demonization is. Um, in other words, oppression among Christians by demons comes, you know, I would say either sporadically, he kind of says, um, it's not a daily battle. It's a, it's a momentary thing that comes and goes. But when someone is demonized, it's a daily torment. And so another analogy he uses um, is, although the demon is dwelling in your life in one way or another, he basically says that they're like a squatter who doesn't have the grounds to be there. Um, if you are a Christian, you're filled by the Holy Spirit. Um, but he makes an argument that um, demons can have a substantive place in your life, even as a Christian, if you give them what the Bible calls uh, a foothold. So it says, you know, do not give the devil a foothold in your life. And he, he interprets that to mean that you've gone on in sin. Either you've gone on in sin, there's generational sin that's been passed on to you. Um, or he has a third category that he defines in the book that can lead to um, giving, giving the enemy a place, a foothold in your life. And so the analogy he uses is um, God owns the house as a Christian, but you can have an unwanted squatter. So someone who's camping out in your house, they don't have a right to be there, but you just got to kick them out. And I thought that was a super helpful analogy. So I just wanted to share this with you guys. Again, it's Carl Payne's book, Spiritual Warfare. The subtitle is Christians, Demonization, and Deliverance. What he offers in this book is a pathway that he says that whether you're a staff or a lay leader or someone who's experiencing daily mental or inner agony that could be associated with demons, he's like, this might help. And so what I find super helpful is that he's not... A sensationalist. He says there's three main buckets that cause someone's life to be in disarray. There's the flesh, there's the world, and then there's the spiritual authorities, rulers, principalities. So there's the world, the flesh, and demons. 
and Satan that can impact us and and make us sin or cause us kind of lead to the destruction of our lives. And, and people, I mean, fall to this, right? We all do to one degree or another, uh, or we all have. So anyway, I think that this is an important part of the conversation. He offers a framework for how to deal with this. He talks about deliverance sessions, and he did not grow up a charismatic. Um, I didn't grow up in a charismatic tradition. In fact, he went to, um, actually, I don't know a lot about it, but he went to Western Seminary in Portland and got a master's and a doctorate there. Um, He's been a leadership training pastor. He's been doing this for literally 40 years. And he felt compelled to write it originally in 2011, and then he republished it in 2020 with Republic Book Publishers. So anyway, I highly recommend it for those who are interested in going deeper or want a different perspective from Neil Anderson that supplements and goes with, but um, that offers something different than what I've read there. So take a look at it. Um, I also offer on the blog, himpublications.com slash blog. Uh, my favorite quotes and kind of a written form of some of the highlights there. So hope you enjoy this and uh, hope you take a read for Carl Payne's Spiritual Warfare.